everybody we're gonna do a video today on a Weber Smoky mounting a 14 inch as you can see I got a bunch of stuff laying around here basically wanted to do a setup video and I'll show you all this but this one's a new one well new used new to me it's never been smoked out it's never been smoked in um, but it's got a couple little scars no big deal but we're gonna set it up and I'm gonna pretend it's a brand new one which it basically is so you can see I want to give you a visual of this stuff. I'm going to grab the camera here if I can. And kind of show you what I all got. Like I said, we got a Weber 14 inch Smoky Mountain. Some of you are familiar with them guys. This is a little guy of the bunch. There's an 18 and a half. And there's also a big 22 uh, Smoky Mountain. But they all operate the same. And what else do we got? So how do these things work? Some people call them a bullet smoker, a water smoker. So hence that's what we got water back there. And why a bullet smoker? Well, obviously they kind of look like a bull. So or a bullet, sorry. So what do we need? Um, here's my setup so far. Of course you're gonna need briquettes or charcoal. Some people use lumps. Uh, everything I've read about Weber Smoky Mountains has pretty much been briquettes play around with see what you said people complain about lump it burns a little hotter so you can play with that I also got wood chunks I got some water I got a chimney I got some paper I got some oil a thermometer something to light my chimney and of course the tongs to move charcoal so I'm kind of give you a visual on this obviously you don't need this much wood but this is this hickory chunk some guys use chips I prefer chunks in mine burn nice kind of more consistent um, Briquettes, obviously, a little bit of water, vegetable oil, igniter, a thermometer, a tongs, and a chimney. So I'm going to kind of walk you through all this and why I do this. Some, some of you, why the vegetable oil? I like to spray mine down and get going. So I'm going to kind of start showing you that. Let's get into this thing. Let's uh, get into this Weber. So you got the smoky mount in here three pieces to it essentially you got the lid you got the main body well those are the three essential pieces you got two racks you got a door um, some people are confused by this your water pan uh, got a little cobwebs going on your charcoal grate charcoal grate there and this is for your charcoal and on these new ones a little grease deflector for the bottom it's kind of nice feature uh, my other one does not have that but so we're gonna get started let's start out with this guy and I like to oil everything so I'm gonna put this back on the tripod I'm gonna oil this and try to give you a good visual of how this all goes together so be put you guys back up here And I believe I got a pretty decent visual there. So start this out. Not everybody does this, but this is my thing. I'm gonna take a little vegetable oil. Since this guy's new and I do this all the time when I'm cleaning up, probably should have gloves on, make it easier. Why? Keeps it from rusting, keeps the charcoal, charcoal from sticking so bad. And I'm gonna show you this too, because I wanna make a good informative video for y'all on this one. As you look down in there, you can see those bolts. That's where that charcoal pan's gonna sit. Sit on right top of that. So now I also got this charcoal ring. Again, this one hasn't been used. So I'm gonna put some oil on this charcoal ring and my water pan. I'm gonna do the same on my water pan. It just makes cleanup easier. And I'll pull the camera down and give you a setup too. Goal of this video is to give you a nice setup on the how to set up a Weber Smoky Mount. In this case, a 14 inch. And again, as noted, oil is my thing. I like to use oil, it works well for me. Next step of this process, we need some charcoal. Since I'm at it, I'm just going to hit my water pan. Again, most people don't do it. It's my step.
Okay, more thoughts. Setting this guy up, some people are really OCD about this, lay this all out. I'm not so picky on this. I mean, I'm typically OCD. But what I got going on is I charcoal down in there, and we're going to use a minion method. So what's a minion method? Basically, a minion method is you make a little hole in there. We're going to put hot coals in there. I also need to add some wood in there. So, and I'm going to add the wood, get the chimney started, and I'll put the rest of it together, but... Again, minion method, you can stack it all pretty. Do you need to have it exactly full? No, it just depends on how long you want to cook. It's kind of up to you how far you want to take it and how much charcoal you want to go. But kind of experiment. Alright, next piece. Some guys lay their wood in there. I like to get a little bit on the bottom where I'm going to put my hot coals and I just like to put a little bit around. That's probably enough, might be even too much. And that kind of dictates how much smoky flavor you got. So we got that set up. Next part is this chimney. So as you can see, I kind of got that going. So now what? Kind of seem to have a little bit of an issue, don't we? Because we got charcoal all set up already like that. So in a campground, typically light my chimney, not a big deal. We could use the gas grill, but I'm still going to do it this way. So I'm just going to write it on top and go for it, which that would write my charcoal again. So maybe that's not a good idea. Um, so what are we going to do? Uh, simple method. I'm actually going to grab another grill and I'm going to light it that way. So I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I did a change of plans. Usually in the campground, I use paper towels and paper, even for the Oklahoma Joe to light it. I don't know why. But I got a gas grill, so I'm going to do a different way to write my charcoal. You can see the charboil. Some of you have seen that in a video. So what do we got here? A gas burner. I got a chimney, obviously. A little bit of charcoal in there. How many briquettes? Uh, roughly 10. Uh, the 14 inch is a small one. I don't need a lot of heat to get this started. Actually, 10 might be too much, but I'm going to run with it now. So, how are we going to do this? I'm going to turn the gas on and hit the niter. We got fire. So, I'm just going to let the gas burner light my charcoal for me. And, yeah. It'll get rolling and as soon as we get that smoking, we'll dump that. So some guy, if you got a side burner or whatever, a lot of guys do that. Why do we want to do this? Some people don't like lighter fluid. Why? It leaves flavor. Another way to do this is cleaner. Might get a little ash on my gas grill. So what? Take a wet towel, wipe it off, done. And I don't have paper mess in the yard. So that's a trick to do too. But we're going to have to wait for that to warm that charcoal up. Now I'm just going to go right on high and those briquettes will get going here shortly because we'll have enough heat there. We can hear feel it already and that should start smoking soon. But in the meantime, I'm going to bring you back out here. So we're done with the charcoal. I'm also done with my wood chunk, so we'll get that out of the way. And next part, nothing really. Um, I'm going to take my oil again. The, another thing about the Weber's, they got two grates. I'm gonna actually, I'm not gonna do this video just to not cook anything. So I'm gonna take the second grate out because I'm only gonna use one grate and trust the oil bottle. It's gonna hit that. And ideally I would hold this up, not get the grass in it, but I, since I got the camera. So I just sprayed a little bit of oil on that. And that grate sets right up top, two different sizes. I'm gonna have my water pan that needs to go in there too. So I'm gonna sit him over here. I got my water pan full oiled up, which is fine. The water pan just sits in there like that, pretty simple. So now I got my top grate and people say, okay, what about water? Well, a lot of times I'll just pour it through my grate. But in this case, I'm just gonna fill that up. I'm just using a pitcher now. It doesn't have to be great, anything special here. So 
can see there my water pan we got water in there a little oil a little burn off my grate will eventually stack this on top when those coals are going but since that's ready i'm just going to take this put my grate back on there only thing else is i got a thermometer kind of see the smoke rolling from my chimney there so we're going over there i'm going to set that up so my thermometer i got a probe and i got a grill grate hook i've seen a couple of uh posts that people didn't know how to use these so i'm going to show you this this is simple so what i'm going to do is take this it's a spring light clip i want to know the temperature of my smoky mountain so i'm going to put this clip all i got to do is that put in my grate i'm going to spin that but i want it uh on the new ones you got a little hook for a little hole for your probe so I'm going to actually line that up the best I can. Hopefully we can see that. I'm going to go like this. These probes are a little bigger. So kind of a tight fit. So let's do it this way. You can see I'm just going to stick my probe through. And I'm going to take this end. And I'm going to put the camera down for one second. Okay, sorry about that guys. I'll probably edit that out, but here we are. I just pulled the, the cable through. We're all hooked up. That's ready set up to go and we'll hook that into our main thermometer. And when you're spraying oil, it should be smart. I wasn't. And this will hook into that. So are digital thermometers necessary? No, but they make your life easier. I've took uh, just a regular thermometer and stuck it in went by i have a other 18 and a half smoky mountain which is older doesn't have a thermometer on the lid i frankly i've just taken that one and stuck it into the vent hole and i'm gonna walk up look at our charcoal as you can see we're starting to get in some ash there i'm gonna let that cook over so gas grill doing this works really well nice clean no lighter fluid and a couple other things as i kind of clean this up a little bit see my minion method not perfect but it should work and the next thing i do when i start these is i have the vents totally open i like to set them that way and i like to dial my vents down so people like how do you control temp more air because more temp so if i got all three of my vents open on the bottom of the kettle i'm gonna bring more airflow it's pretty calm today you can tell my trees aren't moving um also the top vent I like to use a top vent. I like to run that one wide open unless I have to dial it down. But fuel, if you're getting too much heat on these guys, you're probably starting with too much fuel. Like I might be a little overkill with the chart briquettes I already have going there. So next part is basically dump these briquettes on this and put it together, put our lid off. And like I say, I like to run my three vents on the bottom wide open until I get my temp going. But it's kind of how that works. Yeah, I kind of lost you there for a second. Sorry about that. But as you can see, my coals are getting pretty white and cooked over. Um, typically, it's nice to have them all white. But just getting this, this is going to start out pretty good itself. So I'll let them go a little bit longer. Otherwise, we're pretty much all set up. I talked about vent management, all three on the bottom, wide open. How I like to start it, get my airflow going. Airflow dictates temp. More airflow, the hotter it's going to get in coarse fuel. Um, if I start out with everything cooking in that bottom of that pit, it's going to get hotter. So I don't need a whole char uh, um, chimney full of charcoal that's on fire. I'm going to get too much temp. And once you get these dialed in, they're pretty good as long as my temp stays. I mean, we're sitting at about 75-ish, I think, right now. Supposed to get 85 overcast. Shouldn't be a big deal. So I'm going to put it back on the tripod. I'm going to grab my chimney. I think I'm going to call it good enough. If not, it'll burn. It'll get hotter. But I don't want this too hot. I want to get started. So I'm going to put this on because obviously no hot chimney. So guys, I got my hot coals. I'm just gonna dump that right in and not trip over it. So 
So it don't look like it's doing much, but that's your minion method. Just throw that right in there. You can see my wood starting to kind of get on fire and all that. So now 14 inch isn't that heavy. Well, still with water in it. Now I'm one hand ain't gonna do it. So hold on one second. So all I did so far, I'm gonna give you a little recap. All I did is put that center section on top of my coals. You're getting some smoke there. People talk about dirty smoke, clean smoke, and offsets. I'm not so worried in the Weber Smoky Mountain. And so I'm gonna get that all set up. That's good. I don't actually have my meat prepped, which is fine because I wanna get this temp dialed in. And see if we can get going there. Okay, just got my thermometer on. I got a little oil on it. You can see I'm sitting at 88 degrees. What do I want? I want to be around two and a quarter, 250. I don't get too excited if I get 275. So I'm going to put the dome on or the lid. And I got a lot of ash on there. That's fine. So he, she's all he, whatever, it's all set up. My door, what's this for? I can add charcoal. I can have wood. You can see I got a pretty good little flame going on there. Uh, I got a piece of wood burning, which is fine. get my lid back on that one's a little tight might have to do adjustment but you can see I'm climbing 122 already I want this thing to settle out plus I got some smoke going again again this is a new one um, not been used and typically I like to spray a little oil on the bottom of it too. kind of miss that stuff but we'll clean it out it shouldn't be that bad um, especially water pan gets rid of a lot of it but I'm climbing to 138 so we're climbing really well. You can see it taking off here. 142. And what I try to do, okay, you can see the smoke going that way. So it, it's still really still. But obviously I got wind coming from here. My smoke's kind of going that way. I got a vent that way. So my wind's probably coming from that. I'm going to get in that vent or that vent. And I could move the kettle around to get better wind. What I'm going to do is I think, I know I'm going to get probably too hot here already, but I'm thinking, but I got no wind, so I'm at 154, and I'm just going to let him climb up and settle in. And then how I'm going to do this is kind of going to be hard on videos, I've kind of got to play with. I like to take the vent that's getting the wind, kind of like to close the ones, and use that vent to monitor. But you got wind flow going in there, you're going to have to play with those vents. And I just recommend don't play with all three of them at once, kind of figure out where your wind is. Like now we're going this way, so the back vent. So I'm just going to play with like one vent and go from there. If I'm not getting what I do, I might open one, shut one. But I like, like I say, I like to start out with all of them wide open. Not everybody does. That's my trick. I'm at 163. I mean, I want to get to 225 at least. I don't really care if I get past. You know, I, I kind of have a rule of thumb. If I sit around 225 to 275, I'm happy. Even 220. A lot of guys are so worried I want to be right on 225. I don't have any problem getting decent product at that point so I kind of let it sit in there where it wants to sit all those stuff always comes out fairly well and that's kind of the it for setting this guy up the next thing we do is just got to dial in our vents and the best word of advice I can give a dial in your vents everybody is just take the time you know open them up see how what works for you just don't play with them all like I say I like to have all my four vents wide open I like to get close to my temp and I'll start shutting down vents. The hard part with me for right now, it's so still, I don't know exactly where my airflow is coming from. Um, so I can probably just pick one vent. I'll probably pick the one that's easy. And you know, guys worry about the smoke coming out too. They will eventually seal themselves. Um, I don't know. I personally don't think the gaskets and all these fancy things are worth it on these guys. Maybe the but we'll see as I, I play more with my Weber Smoky Mountains. But I think they're a good product. You want to start smoking. You want to put a little effort into it. You don't want to set it and forget it type thing. And I'll do a review on my Traeger one of these days too. But this is probably the best smoker to start with. 
easy if you want one or two people a 14 inch is great just making like one pork butt not so great for ribs if you don't want to cut them but for a few people it's a great little smoker to start with they run i think around oh, i want to say 200 100 bucks 250 for the little guy i might be off on that price double check me but i'm thinking the little guys are right around 200 maybe a little more but the nice thing about when we're smoky mode and it does give you the time to play with it once we get it dialed in it is pretty much going to stay pretty consistent so it's not like an offset where you got a lot of stuff but i'll have another video comparing them talking about coming up so i hope you like this video i hope you subscribe i hope this helps you gives you some ideas how to set one of these little guys up or in a case uh the 18.5 or the 22 web or smoky mountain same principle it's just kind of dialing your check or dialing on your vents but i'm sitting at 196 you can see I kind of, you know, we might have to run all the vents. Um, as you can see it earlier, it was just climbing, climbing, but you know, 198. So we're going to get really close here. I'm guessing I might even have to run two vents on the bottom of the kettle part of the Weber Smoky Mountain. So I'm going to let that roll, guys, and I'd really like to show you the vents, but I'm going to show you a little bit. All we do is move them back and forth and check your airflow I mean again I'm just gonna encourage you to not try to play with them all at once but shut one down see where your temp goes get your temp stabled out we're at 201 so that's what I'm gonna spend doing I'm gonna do adjust my vents and um, I guess I can show you when it stables out but that's not gonna show you a lot but I hope you kind of enjoyed this video how to set it up I mean this is the basics of it and in the meantime I hope you continue watching hope you uh, subscribe you like it and Follow me on YouTube, Instagram, and of course Facebook. And we're going to have more stuff coming, everybody. Uh, probably do a smoker comparison in the meantime. Got more beer to brew. I want to do a beer in the, brew in the bag set up for you all. Uh, I know some of you watched the extract video. I hope you like that one. But again, more to come. Hope you like the idea. One thing I'm going to say, and then before I sign off, is a great thing about these guys, even the 22. 22 is a little big, but 18, 14 are rather portable. If you want them camping, anything like this would easily fit in a little RV or go to the park with you. Um, so next time, thanks for watching.